Wanna come back to the side Where well, movies were so scary A blood red light Where creatures of the night I wanna come back to the side And kiss the priest green queen I wanna come back to the night My horror night Welcome to the last video store I'm your host Bud Hattonfield And happy Thanksgiving Today, we're going to be in the kitchen in the last video store. We're going to be talking about a little lesser known alien movie that didn't get enough love that it deserved. And we're talking 1983's The Deadly Spawn. The Deadly Spawn was written and directed by Douglas McCohen. I always fuck up last name, so I apologize if I did so. Uh, and it was a fun little low budget alien movie. And if you want to know what does The Deadly Spawn have to do with Thanksgiving, well, it's about a stranger who's never been to this place before, and it comes and eats and fucks up all the natives. Uh, kind of something like what the, the pilgrims did to the poor Native Americans. So, sit back, enjoy, and hang out with me while I prepare our Thanksgiving feast for the last video store as we watch and review The Deadly Spawn, also known as Return of the Aliens, The Deadly Spawn. So a majority of our cast from The Deadly Spawn really did not go on to do a lot of things. Uh, it was a smaller production, I believe, filmed in New Jersey. Uh, I think two different cities in there and whatnot. And the movie starts off with two campers just out enjoying the night skies when all of a sudden they see something uh, fall from the sky and they go to investigate and it quickly leads to their demise. What was that? Hey, come look at this. Let's go look. So the next day, uh, a couple wakes up, dude goes down into the basement to check on it. You can see that it's raining and uh, the little basement door, I wish we had basements in Louisiana. The basement doors open and whatnot. And as he goes to see what's going on in the, do the dark cold damp basement, uh, he gets attacked by some unknown creature and we know exactly what it is. Well, the wife wakes up and she has to have one of the uh, most useless night gowns. You can see boobies and all. So I guess that's, that's always a good time. There's nothing wrong with boobies, but I know I enjoy it. Two at a time. Show 
me them boobies. So as she covers up, she goes down in the basement to go find her husband. And uh, we get some of one of the reasons why this movie is really good. The special effects is awesome. Uh, you can see that one of the alien creatures takes a bite out of her face. She has like a, a big chunk of it missing. And before she can escape, she gets eaten by the deadly spawn. So this large household kind of has like a uh, Home Alone type vibe. They got all kind of people coming out of the woodworks and whatnot. Uh, there's an aunt and uncle that's visiting. And there's a younger boy, I'd, I'd say maybe 11, 12, 13 years old. He's a horror movie and monster movie fanatic. Kind of exactly like I was around his age. Room full of horror movie posters. So that's pretty much how I lived throughout the late 80s, early 90s. Uncle Herb and I find ourselves awake a little earlier than usual. Come on, let's get some breakfast. What is this? We also have an older brother. Uh, the uncle's, I think a psychiatrist or whatever. So he ends up talking to the, the, the younger boy and asking him like what he likes to do and stuff about monsters and he wants him to dress up in his little monster creation and scare him and whatnot. Well, you can see something's afoot because like the carpet starts moving, the little paintings, and you're like, wait a minute, how is this something possible? Because what we saw earlier was much bigger, so it must be different types of aliens and whatnot. So like I was saying, Charles and his uncle was having a little conversation and he was asking him what's his, his favorite movie monster and whatnot. And he had just came up with the idea, hey, I would like you to uh, dress up with one of your masks because if you see early, he has all kind of masks and horror movie, memorabilia and whatnot in his room. And he's like, I would like for you to jump out and scare me at some point today. So. Charles does so, puts on a little cape and a mask, and he goes out into the basement, and that's where he sees something's kind of weird. There's uh, flickering lights, there's blood on the walls and whatnot, and he gets a glimpse of his dead mother's head, which is floating uh, in the, the little flooded water because the basement window was open and it flooded. That's, that's something I hear that happens all the time, basement floods and whatnot. Well, uh, he gets a, a look on the actual creature, and we get to see a good glimpse of it. It's completely awesome. Uh, I believe it was stop motion or whatnot, like clay or whatever, but the special effects was extremely great in this movie. Um, and we see that not only do we get this big creature, there's other bigger creatures, and then there's little slug-like creatures. So the deadly spawn is all over the place.
Charles is two, Charles' older brother's two friends come over. It's a, a male and a female, and they talk about how like the power's out and whatnot. And they had come across this little slug-like creature, unbeknownst to them, that is, is one of the deadly spawn. So they take it upstairs and they look at it. And they talk about dissecting it and whatnot. So uh, yeah, these things are really running rampage all over the goddamn place. Um, so the ant. She goes to, I guess, her mother's house, and they're gearing up for a little party, like a little tea party, the, the tea party, uh, <laughs> with her and her friends. And uh, we already know some people's gonna get this shit fucked up. There's a power line down. Yeah. We're shooting sparks and everything. Where at? Boy, Isn't that dangerous, that is? Where? Right across the highway. We could've been killed. Oh no, they turned off the power just a little while ago. They did? Yeah. Oh, that's why the electrician's coming. Well, who's supposed to, but I doubt very much if he'll come. Anyways, I was standing there, and she was looking at this, this thing. We have a little surprise for you. What? I don't know whether to lead up to it first, or, or just show it to him. You're not going to believe this. What? Where's your bathroom? Upstairs. What? I better dump it in the sink. What? What are you guys talking about? I'm not putting the sink. I really don't know. Frank, hey, Frankie. Here's where we find out how smart he is, Frank. Is that alive? No. What the hell is it? I told Ellen maybe it washed up out of the creek or something, you know, after all that rain and all. I can't even tell if it's a vertebrate. Oh, it's crazy. It's like a freak of nature. If it is a vertebrate, these bumps suggest the order of apodes, apodes, however you say it. But I've never seen anything like that. Maybe it's an eel. You mean those bumps might be, uh, what, undeveloped feet? Yes, some form of locomotion. Dead when you found it? Yeah. Slimy. That's why I put it in the sink. Look at the teeth. Holy mackerel. Hardly. I wouldn't say there's anything holy about it. It's more like a nasty tadpole. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Like the ma the mackerel? Get it? Like the fish? Yeah, we got it. So what is it? A dead fish? A worm? What? A worm? You mean a sort of mutant Adelita? Yeah, it's too big for that. With those teeth, it could almost be a fish. Or it could be a misshapen lamprey, like Frankie suggested. Lamprey? I... Yeah, that's what you said. No. Yes, lamprey, like an eel. Oh. But no gills. Nothing except these weird little bumps. Well, what about a big earthworm? Which is what Annalita means. Oh. Is that on the test? Yeah. Seriously, what do you think, Pete? I'm thinking I don't believe my eyes. I told you you wouldn't believe it. It's not possible. There simply is no such thing. But here it is. You know what reminds me of? Coelacanth. Oh, what? Yeah, coelacanth. Seal. Uh, it's a prehistoric fish they thought was extinct till some fisherman hauled one up about back in 19... In the 30s. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but you know what you're saying? That this thing has had to reappear from the fathomless depths of where? The creek? So what's your hypothesis? I'm going to fail the test, I know. <sighs> what if it's not full grown yet? What if your tadpole joke isn't too far from the truth? This could be the spawn of a freshwater eel. Maybe I was right. Hmm. I'm going to look it up. Okay. I got a better idea. Huh? I'm going to dissect it. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
So while at the little tea party, <laughs> uh, the aunt hears some screaming and she comes back and her mother and all of her friends are all fucked up, getting chewed up by uh, the little deadly spawn. Uh, tadpole looking, looking creatures, little, yeah, <laughs> they bite on them and whatnot. And uh, yeah, some of these things look like a sex toy and whatnot, them little creature cocks, that's the thing. YouTube, don't flag me. It's a real thing. Don't, uh, don't kink shame nobody. So, uh, nobody dies at the party, which is good. Not that nobody I see because they're all able to get up, peel the little uh, tadpoles off of them, and run out the door. Shit's hit the fan at the household and whatnot, and they go to check on the uncle who's been sleeping in the chair, and they see that his body is just completely infested by the, the little many spawn creatures and whatnot. So they, uh, Charles's brother and his two friends, they run upstairs. Charles's still in the basement fucking around and whatnot. It's like he's living amongst them like he was that little, uh, that little bear creek character, that little dude who went to film a documentary, and he totally got ate by the fucking bears and whatnot. Uh, what was I getting at? Yeah, yeah. They they go run upstairs. They freak it out. And they see that another friend that shows up to the door, and they remember, shit, we gotta go get Charles. So, uh, the little female friend she runs into him along with Charles, and that she sees that hey, they got some alien creatures and whatnot. And she gives the best line after they get safely behind the door. So it's actually quite funny. Uncle Arm, look at this. So the first little female friend, she gets eaten. Uh, the older brother and the two friends, well, they all decide to go up to the basement. And that's when Charles has a good idea. He grabs one of the masks from his room. He sticks like a lamp or something in there, or the cord to a lamp or something in there, along with some black powder. And he's gonna make a little bomb for the creature. Well, like I said, they end up in the attic, all hell's breaking loose. The big giant creature, for some reason, got from the basement to the upstairs to the attic. And uh, yeah, shit's about to go down, so we're about to get to the climactic part of the Deadly Spawn. Where's Charles? Samania? It's 
gotta be Charles. So the creature blows up, thanks to Charles, because he's, he's a fucking savage with his little Home Alone, uh, way before Home Alone was a thing, so good for him. Uh, and now it's Night of the Living Dead style with the posse going around, rouging up all the, the rest of the deadly spawn, killing them and putting them into the fire and whatnot. And we think all is well. Well, we get a glimpse of the house, and there's like this little mountain top slope. We, we live in Louisiana. We don't get shit like that. Like the biggest thing we got at an incline is a fucking speed bump. So we see that uh, the mountain opens up and it's one of the biggest deadly spawns we've ever seen. And I, I guess we're assuming that, hey, these things has always been here and they're hungry and uh, they're not as invaders after all. And that is the end of the movie. Oh. <laughs>
K24, come in. Well, we're through here for tonight. How's it where you are? Under control. They just pulled a three foot thing out of the bushes. Three foot, that's nothing. You see what they got down out of the attic. Eight feet long. Eight feet? I guess they just keep growing. Eight feet. What do you say? Write a book when this is all over. Yeah, I'll be right over. So that was the deadly spawn. I know I ramble. That's something I do. I talk all over the goddamn place and I try to stay on topic, but there's little things that catch my attention and I think it's all interesting. So just bear with me. Uh, deadly spawn was great. Out of five stars, I definitely give it four. You got us uh, some pretty good acting along the lines of people who've never really been in anything before. I think one of the little friends played a small part in Maniac as like the little beach kid or something like that. Uh, I don't think the writer and director ever did anything else after this, uh, but it was, it was definitely a fun little movie. The special effects was, was out of its time, especially being in 1983, you get these creatures and whatnot, and uh, it's, they're all miniatures for the most part, and I think they have a few like life size. But it's great, they did what they did with the extremely low budget that they had, and I think they made a huge impact. Uh, unfortunately, the movie was kind of lost because of its lower budget. I know it's people heard of it, it got put out there, but it's not as big as it should be because it's, it's definitely just a fun little entertaining film. Uh, when it comes to home media release, uh, Synapse had put out a DVD. Synapse is always great. It's still in print, and I think you can get this off of Amazon roughly around 10 bucks. Um, I think it's currently streaming on Amazon Prime. I could be wrong about that, but you can find it in its entirety on YouTube at a pretty good, uh, I always think it was, was uh, cut uh, stream, whatever the hell you want to call it. Now, unfortunately, they had a Blu-ray release of it. I think Elite, yes, Elite, uh, I can't read that word, but MVD Vigil, they put out a Blu-ray of it, but unfortunately, it is extremely out of print, and it goes for about 100 bucks. Uh, I'm not going to say how much I spent on this because my wife watches this show. And uh, if you can't find it on Blu-ray at a decent price, I'd say pick it up because it's just, it's a great little movie. It's something cool to have. You know, the little art is great. So I definitely say support less on our horror movies. And it was kind of a... What's the word I'm looking for here? Kind of a in name sequel to the aliens or something like that because the original title was return of the aliens the deadly spawn 
and it's quite, that's just my turkey going off, I'm about to turn it. But it's actually quite funny because it got its own little in name sequel in the 1990s called Metamorphosis, The Alien Factor. And it has nothing to do with the movie whatsoever. The aliens don't really look the same. But this is still in print. You can still check this out. Uh, it's a fun little alien movie from, I think, 1990, 1991. It really doesn't matter. But check out The Deadly Spawn. You will not be disappointed. If you are, you just don't like good horror movies. No, I'm messing with you. But, uh, again, happy Thanksgiving. Eat some turkey. Uh, be good people. The last video store. Again, I'm your host, Bud Haddonfield. Check you out next week. We're going to start doing some Christmas horror movies. I wish that other one would shut the fuck up. But anyway, y'all all have a nice day, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah, I wanna come back to those nights